Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to solve problem number 44 from the second chapter, Force Vectors in the book of Engineering Mechanics, the Aesthetics part by R.C. Hippler. In this problem, we are being asked to determine the magnitude of F3 force, which should be expressed in terms of F1. And also we are being asked to determine the angle theta, which F2 and F3 are making with each other. What we are being given, we are being given that the resultant force makes the zero resultant force. We are also being given that the magnitude of the F2 force is half of the magnitude of F1 force and the angle between F1 and F2 is 90 degree. So let's solve this problem. Consider the post on which these three forces are acting. Before we proceed, we need to do some basic stuff like we should be knowing the angle which these F1 and F2 forces are making with respect to x-axis or y-axis. For F2, we can see that this will be the angle which this F2 force will be making with the x-axis. So this angle is theta, then this angle would be 180 minus theta. How about this F1 force? The F1 force will be making some angle, let's say alpha angle. How we can have alpha in terms of theta? You can see that this total angle from positive x-axis to the negative y-axis measured counterclockwise would be 270. So this 270 is actually composed of theta, 90 and alpha. You can see theta up to f1 force 90 from f2 to f1 alpha angle which is required so from here we can see that alpha would be equal to 180 minus theta it is same as that of f2 making with the negative x-axis that makes sense because they make an angle 90 degree with each other let's move on for the calculations we have the advantage here that the resultant force is zero it means this component will also be having the zero magnitude so if we take the sum of all the forces which is actually resultant that should be equal to zero because this magnitude is given so let's then divide the resultant force into its x and y component and then taking the summation of the x and y component those should be equal to zero and doing the calculations so summation of all the forces which should be equal to the resultant is actually equal to zero or in other words you can say the summation of all the forces which is making the resultant equal to zero let's say the x component first and then the y component taking rightward forces as positive f3 is rightward hence positive F2 would be negative because of its leftward direction cos 180 minus theta the x component of F2 for F1 it will again be leftward hence negative now this angle alpha is with the y axis so instead of cos we will be using sine so you can simplify this F3 in terms of F1 like F2 is equal to half of F1 this is negative if you shift on the other side it will become positive so positive half of f1 cos 180 minus theta if you remember some basics of trigonometry this cos 180 minus theta would be equal to minus cos theta this minus f1 sine theta shifted on the other side has become positive f1 and if you do some basic uh, trigonometry in sine 180 minus theta you're going to get sine theta here so we did not get f3 in terms of f1 yet because there is a theta involved here so let's move on further to determine theta for that we have to take summation of all forces acting in y direction equal to zero why i'm doing it because the resultant is zero or you can say that this post is in equilibrium taking upward forces as positive y component of f3 will be zero the y component of f2 would be f2 sine 180 minus theta upward hence positive but the f1 will have downward x y component hence negative f1 instead of sine we will be having cos because this alpha is making an angle with the y so f2 is equal to half of f1 keeping every other terms as same if you shift this negative on the other side it will become positive 
f1 is common on both the sides so get cancelled if you shift this cos theta on the other side so this will become 10 180 minus theta half will become 2 on the other side so 10 inverse of 2 will give you 63.43 degrees so if you simplify from here you will get theta as 116.56 degrees so once you have got theta then just simply put it over here so f3 half this is the negative f1 cos 116.56 similarly f1 sine 116.56 so when you do some basics you will calculate cos 116.56 and sine 116.56 you're going to get 1.12 of f1 so this is how you will calculate any force in terms of other if you are being given with uh, some conditions like the resultant force is zero this is one of the answer as well we just have calculated f3 in terms of f1 and also we have calculated the angle between f2 and f3 the theta angle so this is all from this video where we have just learned how we can calculate the magnitude of one force in terms of the other force and also the angle between any two forces using some basics calculations this is all from this video thank you for watching this video I believe you understanding the problems of force vectors. If you have any question, then please let me know through the comment section so that we can further get better understanding to these problems. Thank you.